What if I told you China is reshaping its geography to solve one of the biggest water crises in history? I'm talking about a project so vast, it's referred to as the Great Wall of Water, costing more than $62 billion and taking decades to complete. The South to North Water Transfer Project is an extraordinary engineering marvel aimed at transporting billions of gallons of water over thousands of miles to satisfy the water needs of northern cities such as Beijing. But can such an ambitious plan truly work, or will it drown under its own challenges? Stay tuned as we dive into the epic story of China's boldest infrastructure gamble yet. China is facing one of the world's most pressing water challenges with its population going over 1.4 billion. The northern parts of the country are considerably drier than the eastern and southeast, which enjoy plentiful water supplies. Northern China, which is home to more than 160 million people and includes important cities such as Beijing and Tianjin, receives only around 14% of the country's water supply. This scarcity of water gave birth to the South-North Diversion Project. The journey of this significant project extends over many years, starting with Mao Zedong's original idea in the 1950s and concluding with its formal initiation in the 21st century. In 1952, Mao Zedong, the creator of the People's Republic of China, initially suggested the concept of moving water from the water-rich southern areas to the dry north. His vision originated from the absolute necessity to tackle the persistent water shortage in northern China, an area vital for agriculture, industry, and urban hubs, including the capital city, Beijing. Mao's idea was groundbreaking for its era, imagining the use of China's extensive river systems, especially the Yangtze River, to more fairly distribute water resources throughout the nation. The idea emphasized China's goal to utilize natural resources for driving economic growth and supporting a swiftly rising population. Following Mao's first plan, talks and feasibility studies commenced in the 1950s, but the project faced many challenges. Despite being innovative, Mao's idea was not implemented for decades. The project wasn't officially approved until 2002, despite the early concept. By this time, China had undergone significant industrialization, economic expansion, and population shifts, all of which made the northern water crisis worse. The Chinese government finally approved the South-North Water Transfer Project on August 23, 2002. Segmented into three primary paths, eastern, central, and western, the project targets the unique water requirements of various areas. The eastern route focuses on transferring water from the lower Yangtze River to northern provinces like Shandong and Jiangsu, utilizing existing canals and upgrading ancient infrastructure such as the Grand Canal. The central route diverts water from the Danjiangku Reservoir located on the Han River, delivering it to major cities such as Beijing and Tianjin via intricate tunneling and aqueduct systems across rugged landscapes. Water from the upper Yangtze River is planned to be redirected to the Yellow River Basin through the Western Route, which is currently in the design stage but encounters considerable environmental and technical obstacles. If successfully executed, the Western Route might supply water to as many as 100 million individuals, significantly easing water shortage in northern China. Diverting water from the Yangtze River and its tributaries affects natural water currents, potentially disturbing aquatic ecosystems and biodiversity. A further major issue is the risk of water pollution. As water moves from the south to the north, it often transports pollutants, such as harmful chemicals and parasites that can pose health risks. Despite significant efforts to cleanse the water before distribution, there are still risks of disease outbreaks occurring due to inadequate treatment. Before we move on, I'd like to ask you a small favor. If you like this content, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of you watch the videos without subscribing. Imagine what we could accomplish if everyone subscribed. It costs you nothing, but it makes a huge difference to us.
So is it done? Great, thanks so much. Extensive areas of land have been flooded or cleared to make way for these buildings, displacing animals and changing the surrounding environment. These environmental shifts can lead to a chain reaction, upsetting the fragile equilibrium of ecosystems in both the moisture-laden south and the dry north. The water crisis impacts everyone, but farmers are hit hardest due to economic factors. Cultivating crops such as wheat requires a lot of water but yields low profits. For instance, it requires 1,000 tons of water to cultivate a ton of wheat valued at $150, whereas a factory can create a ton of steel valued at $550 using just 14 tons of water. The societal impact of the project is equally significant, starting with the relocation of communities. To enable the building of the central and eastern routes, around 300,000 individuals were moved from their residences. Although these moves were essential for executing the project, they frequently caused considerable disruption for those impacted. Many displaced people encountered difficulties in restoring their lives, such as loss of employment, cultural connections, and social networks. On the positive side, the project has improved water access for millions of people in northern China, particularly in major cities like Beijing and Tianjin. This access has alleviated severe water shortages, supporting urban development and enhancing the quality of life in these regions. However, the benefits are not evenly distributed. Some areas in the south have experienced reduced water flow, raising concerns about the long-term sustainability of water availability for local communities and agricultural needs. Another significant problem is the gap between rural and urban areas. Although urban areas have significantly gained from the project, numerous rural communities, especially those not situated along the diversion paths, still face challenges related to water scarcity. This gap highlights a larger problem in China's infrastructure progress, as urban centers frequently take precedence over rural regions. Tackling this disparity is still a challenge, as providing fair water distribution necessitates balancing the needs of urban and rural communities. With an estimated $62 billion in total costs, the South to North Water Diversion Project is one of the most costly infrastructure projects ever. The project has received substantial funding from the Chinese government, which sees it as a strategic priority for the advancement of the country. However, the sheer scale and complexity of the undertaking have led to frequent budget overruns, with costs escalating due to unforeseen technical challenges, environmental mitigation measures, and delays in implementation. These financial strains have ignited discussions about the project's long-term economic viability, especially considering its continuous maintenance and operational expenses. The project has generated international political concerns, especially with nearby nations such as India, which shares several of the involved water sources. Concerns regarding water rights and management have caused diplomatic strains, since the project's possible influence on cross-border water flow might impact areas downstream. The project's scope is unmatched, requiring the rerouting of water over hundreds of kilometers and addressing natural obstacles like mountains and valleys. A significant engineering achievement is the development of intricate tunnel networks to move water across hilly landscapes, necessitating advanced construction methods and technologies. Other than that, the development of large reservoirs and vast aqueduct systems guarantees that water can be stored, controlled, and supplied effectively. However, the obstacles are just as significant. In northern cities such as Beijing, the initiative seeks to guarantee lasting water security, essential for urban development and stability. By 2030, the project aims to increase this transfer to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers per year. While water transfers may decrease during dry years, the system is designed to ensure a flow of at least 6.2 cubic kilometers per year with 95% confidence, providing a consistent supply even in drier periods. 
China is also focusing on integrating this project with broader sustainable water policies to mitigate environmental impacts. Potential expansions include additional canal routes and new water sources, with a growing emphasis on balancing regional needs and reducing ecological harm to ensure a more sustainable future. But, according to many people, this project is just a temporary fix, basically a band-aid to solve the water crisis. They believe that more efforts are required if people want a permanent solution to China's water crisis. They may also include water conservation, climate adaptation strategies, and pollution control. But the fact that China took a bold step in order to solve its water scarcity issue still stands. The South to North Water Diversion Project is a remarkable engineering achievement and a crucial initiative to tackle water scarcity problems in China. Although the project has greatly advanced in enhancing water availability throughout northern China, it still faces numerous challenges. From maintaining water quality to managing geopolitical tensions, there are still many hurdles to overcome. As China continues to navigate these complexities, critical questions remain. Will the project ensure long-term water security for northern regions? Should the ambitious western route proceed, or does the potential risk outweigh the rewards? Only time will reveal the answers.